Hello, and welcome to LLMware, which provides a framework for developers who are looking to quickly integrate AI-based workflows into their applications. Before diving into code, let's quickly review what LLMware is. Uh, first off, LLMware is a Python package that you can get started with right now. It's available on PyPI and can be installed in seconds. LLMware is also completely free and open source. You can browse the GitHub repo where you'll find the code as well as many helpful working examples. In addition to supporting all the most popular models and LLMs, uh, LLMware also contributes its own specialized models, which you can find hosted and described in detail at Hugging Face. LLMware can be used on its own to quickly prototype new ideas you might have with AI or LLMs, and it can also be used as a component in your existing applications to add those kind of capabilities very quickly. And despite its powerful capabilities, we've taken great care to make LLMware very easy to get started with, as I hope you'll see now. So let's take a look at a very popular AI approach these days called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG for short and how LLMware can help build something there very quickly. Just as a quick reminder, RAG is an approach where you don't just prompt an LLM and hope to get back useful or relevant results, but instead you first leverage your own data to generate some sort of meaningful context that can be sent along with your query that the LLM is gonna to use to provide results that are hopefully much more relevant to you as well as more accurate and hopefully useful. So I'm going to switch over to PyPI now. We'll quickly review the steps for getting started. The first step is obviously to get the LLMware module installed, which can be done with a simple pip install, or depending on how you have Python installed, you might need to use this alternate way. But once that's done, you're ready to get started. I'm going to do one more thing though, which is to get Mongo and Milvis up and running. Uh, most people have probably heard of Mongo, very popular open source database. And Milvis is a very popular open source vector database for storing vector embeddings. These two components, they're not strictly required by LLMware, but for use cases that involve significant data ingestion or where you might want to build up a corpus of data over time, they're very valuable tools that LLMware integrates with in a first class way. We've also made it really easy to get them up and running locally here with this Docker Compose file that'll take care of everything for you. You just need Docker installed. So I'm going to switch over to my editor now. And here I have the repo cloned or you can fork it. Um, I would recommend this if you're going to try one or more of our examples, since you'll have easy access to them all here in the examples folder. Um, but obviously you can, you know, cut and paste specific files out of the GitHub UI as well. Um, up to you. So first step, let's get the mod, let's get LLMware installed. So again, it's a pip install LLMware. Depending on what you already have installed or not, this can take a few seconds or maybe up to a minute, uh, depending on what you have. So it's already done for me. So next step, let's get that Mongo and Milvis up and running. Um, if you've got the repo cloned, you've got access to the Docker Compose file already, or you can use that curl command we saw earlier to pull it locally. Um, to get this going, you just run docker compose up and you do want to throw the minus D on there so that you'll get your command prompt back. Um, if, if you're running this for the very first time, there will be some time when the Mongo and Milvis containers get pulled locally. Um, but then once you've done it once, your starting should be as fast as it is for me here because I already had them cached. Okay, so we're all set. So let's jump into the RAG example. If you head into the examples folder, you'll see there's a specific example called RAG. Let's just open it. And I am gonna switch my editor here so that hopefully it's easy to read. So this is the entire code. Uh, fits on basically one page aside from the, the imports. Um, hopefully it'll be very easy to follow along with this or any of our examples because we've added lots of comments. Uh, but in this case, we'll step through each section just quickly to talk about what it's doing. So first off, at the top, we are importing a few LLMware classes. Um, also, because this is a RAG example, we are going to be reaching out to an LLM. In this case, we're going to reach out to GPT-4 from OpenAI. 
So this example assumes that you've got uh, an OpenAI, OpenAI API key and that you've set it as an environment variable. Um, or you could just edit this code directly and just paste in your API key right here. Um, it's up to you. So the actual code, um, it does a few things. First off, we're going to create what's called a library. And a library in LLMware land is really just a named collection of data. So um, as you're working with your own data, that can come from a variety of places, you know, PDFs, Word documents, text files, JSON files, whatever, whatever you have, you've got data stored away in those files. Um, as you want to um, start working with that data in an AI context, you can start putting them into libraries. And you can have as many libraries as you want. They can all have different names. And then you can start to do um, AI-specific things against your libraries, as we'll see here. So we are going to, and, and this, this RAG example, I should mention, uh, we are going to uh, import a bunch of employment agreements, and then we're going to ask the LLM some questions about the termination provisions, summarize everything it seems to see about termination uh, in the contracts that we're gonna that we're gonna pass in or the agreements. So in this case, first step, we're gonna create a library. We just give it the name agreements. And then we need some data. So to make LLMware as easy as possible to get started, we've packaged up a few hundred documents of different types and different folders. And you can pull those all down with this one command, set up load sample files. In there is a, uh, a folder called agreements. Um, and so we are going to add the files from that folder into the library we just created with the same name. And I do want to pause for a second on this library.add files call. This might look innocuous or simple, but it's actually doing a ton under the covers. So the you can pass in any local folder uh, that you have with documents in it into this method. And this is going to go find all the parsable documents. It's going to parse them all. It's going to extract uh, chunks, or we actually call them blocks. Think of it like paragraphs of, of text, hopefully contextually related um, chunks of text, and then make it available for all the uh, subsequent AI workflows. So all that's going to happen with this one command here. So once that's done, we've got a library populated with data ready to go. Then the next step is we are going to create some vector embeddings. And this is so that we can do a good semantic search in the next step. So in this case, we're going to call library dot install new embedding. And we're just going to pass in two parameters. The first parameter is what embedding model do we want to use? In this case, we're going to use actually an LLMware supplied model called industry BERT contracts. This is a model that's been fine tuned on you know, contract and agreement terminology and can generate really good, really accurate um, embedding vectors. And then we're going to store those vectors in Milvis, the component we just brought up earlier. Other options here, we do support out of the box uh, face from the Facebook research team, as well as Pinecone and support for other vector DBs will be coming, coming soon. Okay, so once we've got a set of uh, vector embeddings done for our library, then we can start to move on to the more interesting stuff. So as the first step in a RAG scenario, we're going to generate some context from our own data, in this case, those employment agreements. So we are going to do a semantic query for the word termination, because we want to get back all the data that's related to this. And again, because this is a semantic query, this is much more than a keyword search. This is going to return any data related to you know, anything in this space, like leaving a company or getting fired or anything in that, in that, uh, in that area. So to do that, we create an object called a query. Uh, we we uh, initialize it with the library that we've just created, um, and we tell it to do a semantic query. And in this case, we're just asking for 20 results back. We get asked for hundreds back, but you know, top 20 for our, our RAG use case here should be just fine. And this is going to return a query results object, which you can you could have other code that just iterates through them and looks at them. But in our case, we are just going to pass it into the next step, which is our prompt. So here we are setting up a prompt that will talk to OpenAI's GPT-4, passing in an, AP, uh, an API key. Again, you could just paste your API key directly here. Um, but this is the key step. We are saying, and this is before the prompt has been sent out, before the summarized termination provisions prompt, 
we are saying add this uh, context, which in this case is the query, query results we got in the previous step. Once we've done that, we're ready to actually make the prompt. So then we say prompt with source. In this case, the source again is those query results. Um, and we're passing in the prompt text. So we're asking GPT-4, summarize the termination provisions given all the context that we're sending into you. And then this parameter here, the prompt name, um, this is what type of result we want back. So out of the box, we support 30 or so uh, different prompt styles. Um, in this case, we're asking to summarize uh, the answer and include bullet form. Um, other types of styles could be, you know, I only want a number back. Maybe I'm interested in a very specific numeric result for the question I'm asking, or maybe I want the model to explain something to me like I'm a child because it's a very complicated subject and I don't understand it. So we have about 30 of these that you can use out of the box and you can find examples on how to use them in our examples folder. But that's pretty much it. At this point, we're starting to get responses back from the LLM. Um, depending on how we had to chunk up your, your question, maybe the, the context window was large, maybe we chunked up the, uh, the query or the prompt into multiple different uh, chunks, and, and you'll get back a response for each one. So you can iterate through those. And then also, uh, maybe as a last step, maybe we want to generate a, a report that we can send to a human to review. So in this case, we'll generate a, a CSV report of, of everything we just did with that model. So that's pretty much it. So now let's take a look at the code in action and maybe we'll follow along with the, um, with the code uh, as it's running. So I am going to just run the code with Python uh, examples reg. And we'll start to see some prints. And as I said, we'll just follow along with the code. So the first thing that's happening, uh, we've created the library called agreements. This step here, loading the sample files again, because there's a few hundred files, this will take a few seconds the first time you, you do it. Um, and there we're done. So next step is we are going to create the vector embeddings. Um, and again, this is going to pull down uh, this model if you haven't pulled it locally yet. So this could take a little bit of time. Okay, so the embeddings are being created now, the vector embeddings. You can see we had 687 basically chunks of data. And so now we have vector embeddings created for all of them. Um, now we're moving on to the semantic query. So this is where we're interacting uh, with the vector embeddings. And now the LLM is being asked the question. So go summarize the termination provisions. And here is our response that came back, a bulleted list like we asked for. And if we want to go look at the CSV report, we can go do so here at this file. So um, I hope the point is, uh, has been made here that this is really, really simple to get started with. And again, you can try all of our examples. They work sort of the same way where they'll document a particular use case and with a few lines of code show you how it's done. Now I did say I would show you where the uh, data is being stored. So by default, and this is overridable, but by default you'll find in your home folder after you've run one or more of our examples, a folder called LLMware data. And when you look in here, um, you'll see a few different things created. Um, you'll see it, for example, if I go into model repo, um, here's that industry BERT contracts. This is the embedding model we created uh, for tokenizing. A GPT-2 tokenizer is pulled down. Various other things. You can poke around in this folder. Um, maybe it's also worth looking. Here's the sample files that got pulled down. These are all the different types of files. And actually, this will probably grow over time as well as we decide uh, we want to show off new types of uh, document support or things like that. But for now, you can kind of navigate in here and find all different types of files. So I hope this has been helpful and I hope you'll take a look at the other uh, videos that we'll be posting about using our other examples and that you'll be trying LLMware. And we look forward to any and all feedback. Thank you very much.